On Tuesday, February 13th, the Board of Selectmen meeting took place at the HCAM studios. The Selectmen accepted an ambulance fund gift in memory of Fire Chief Richard J. McMillan. Richard, commonly referred to as Rick McMillan, was a veteran of the U.S. Army and served the Hopkinton Fire Department for 35 years, including serving as chief. I'm proud to talk about this. So, obviously, we talked about Chief McMillan passing away at our last meeting. <clears throat> he was a great guy, great guy for the town, and uh, a pioneer in the in the fire service, not just the fire department, but in, pirate, in the fire service. So. Uh, it's not surprising to see all these, all this uh, sh uh, show of gratuity for all the hard work, selflessly that the chief did for years and years and years here. It's it's nice that uh, you know we can benefit. Unfortunately, it's posthumously, but it's nice that we can benefit as a department from people's generosity. So thank you very much, and it's a it's a, a great charity that these some of these people are choosing at the end of their lives, and uh, it's going to. It's going to help us get our department, uh, you know, further its training and its professionalism to be safe and secure moving forward. So it's a, it's a great gift. Thank you. If I may, I just want to take a minute um, because the list, the list is just huge and it represents over $1,000 in contributions. And um, <clears throat> I just want to recognize by name the contributors, the Fire Chiefs Association of Massachusetts, Patricia Aspinwall, Paul Phipps Insurance, James Bartlett, Timothy Clifford and Eleanor Arsenault, Townsend Yacht Club, Linda Rosener and um, M. Teresa Goodale, Russell Ellsworth and Mary Ellsworth, Deborah Bent, Nancy DeWolf, Judith Keefe, Charlotte Colella, John and Ruth Knowles, Francis and Phyllis Pine, James and Patricia Parker, Janet E. Ray, and Henry Boroyan. Um, and as I said, this group of people has already has contributed over a thousand dollars, and those contributions just keep rolling in. So I think it's it's worth uh, giving them personal thanks. The Board of Selectmen also heard from IT Department and School Committee regarding the 2019 budget requests. The Information Technology Department has three items submitted um, for capital expenditures for the upcoming fiscal year. Uh, the first was originally submitted for $45,500, which was for town hall security upgrades. Um, since the original submission, this capital item has been uh, adjusted down from uh, comprising of three sub-projects, uh, eliminating two of those projects, putting those on hold uh, potentially for a future year. Uh, that brings the cost to $20,000, which allows for key card access to be added to all exterior doors at Town Hall um, and combining that into the existing card access control system uh, that exists at the police station, library, and DPW. What's being pushed out? Um, we had also originally recommended one camera, one external camera, um, be mounted externally on the building, external door, um, to monitor each of the exterior doors. And we also originally recommended internal wiring to be run to internal doors that we thought um, in the future may be recommended to also add interior card access. Um, the primary reason that we were recommending the internal wiring at this point um, was because the walls are already opened up um, due to the water damage prior to putting the sheetrock up. Um, we'd be able to recognize a, a savings running yeah. those wires now as, a, as opposed to in the future. Yeah, and so what kind of savings would we would we be looking at? What's what are the prices and the price differences? Um, so it, it, it it's hard to say roughly. exactly, yeah. but um, yeah. roughly by doing that wiring now, we'd be looking at um, a range of approximately eight thousand to ten thousand dollars, and we believe that by doing that once the drywall was up, we'd be looking at a premium of roughly seven to eight thousand dollars. On top of that, if we're, if we're not going to be in town hall for fiscal year nineteen. If we're not going to be in there by then, if, if we're probably not, a lot of stuff that we can... If we're not going to be putting drywall up at all during fiscal year 19, that is 
signal to me that that building needs so much work that we should be getting rid of it, honestly. We still expect to be back in town hall uh, by May of this year. As of right now, if you were a town hall, you'd have seen lots of people coming in and out of the building. We have electricians already working. Uh, we expect the, the drywalling uh, uh, companies to come in uh, as early as next week. So work is going on. If, if, you, if you were a town hall this week, you, you, you would have noticed. The school committee also talked about their budget requests, including the proposed artificial turf fields at the high school. Um, but as a reminder, we do have $1.7 million from CPC. We're in the process of securing um, community funding. In fact, right now in a different meeting in a different part of town, we're um, engaging a group to manage um, some kind of a GoFundMe-like campaign. And we have been working to identify some um, some sponsors as well. So we actually didn't have a quorum at our last turf field subcommittee meeting, but we were going to discuss having a goal of at least $500,000 in community funds to raise towards this project as well. So all of that is ongoing, and um, as soon as we know what the final cost will be, we will reach out to um, town hall so we can get an actual tax impact, and then we'll really know what what we're talking about in terms of a dollar amount as well as if it's going to impact FY19 or FY20. To see the full Selectman meeting, head over to our YouTube page, youtube.com slash HCAMTV. The planning board was unable to vote on Whisper Ridge due to a couple members missing, but the board did take a vote on the Saddle Hill Road project. So, um, this is for a stormwater management permit. Um, submitted to the board pursuant to Chapter 172, stormwater management and erosion control. Majority vote is required. Um, we've endorsed a, an ANR plan for five lots, but we now know it's up to 11 lots. Um, and there's also the issue of a, a scenic road permit, um, which has already been issued. Okay, so we've uh, we voted to add those four conditions. So now we're going to take our second and hopefully final vote for um, all 10 conditions. Mr. Chair, I move that we approve with conditions that we've listed. Uh, modification of restrictions which will ensure that the project meets the standards and adequately protects water resources. Is there a second? Second. Second. Is second. that one of the specific choices? Is that what you were reading? Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. Great. Thank Fumbled you. Over it, but yes. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I just wanted to make sure we weren't freewheeling. So, any further discussion? Um, so, just to, to highlight the six standard conditions plus the four conditions, I'll spell them out now: a stormwater prevention plan, um, a homeowners association and operations maintenance plan review. Uh, town, town official inspecting soil conditions and an as-built plan. Does that sound fair, Elaine? Those you have those four mm -hmm. extras with details of those. So I see we're ready for a vote. Yep. All those in favor, say aye. 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 Those opposed. Those abstained. So carries. You can also see the full planning board meeting on our YouTube page, youtube.com/hcamtv.